It's 8 o'clock. I will call the February 9th transit meeting to order. Um, we have everyone present, plus our board chair, Dave. Um, approval of minutes. I approve the minutes. I'll second. We got Joe making the motion. Chuck seconded. Any discussion on the minutes? If not, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Well, passes. Uh, public hearing none. Items, please, the chair none. Staff reports on to us. Uh, Austin. All right. Morning, everybody. Good morning. I have one question, Mr. Chair, before we get rolling. Go ahead. It is March, isn't it? Yes. He said we we're going to get the February 9th meeting going. I think he, Randy, did you catch that? Yeah, yeah sorry about that. <laughs> I want to be in February yet, okay? Spring has kind of shown its face out there, not this morning, though. All right, Transit Commission meeting March 9th, 2022. Uh, a little bit quicker meeting today. It's been kind of a cluster this morning. Somebody just got to work that was supposed to be here at 7. So we played merry-go-round the shifts. Um, to cover, to get stout covered uh, and make sure no beat was lost, but it's been a morning. The agenda today, ridership, uh, financials, uh, I have an electric bus update for everyone, staffing around the shop, around the buses, and any questions that anyone might have. Ridership. Um, ridership was good uh, in February compared to January, Stout was also back since the last week of January. Uh, but anyways, uh, North Stop and Red Cedar ridership increased to 474 in February from 430 in January. There was an increase of 10%. And then looking back from December to January, another double digit increase of 11%. So between the two months being up 21% compared to December. Uh, community route. Stout was back, so obviously that'll lead to an increase of four weeks of stout overflow on the community route, but a lot of kids riding the bus to North Town and other uh, community stops, but uh, 875 in February from 542 in January. And another big increase in January from uh, back in December. Stout route ridership, this has to be kind of calculated more of a day average um, than a month average from only having five days in January compared to 20 days in Feb. But uh, we're at 15,862 in February. That was between 20 days, close to 800 riders a day. And looking back to January, uh, in five days, we were averaging around 1,030 a day. So... Uh, real good numbers, but those cold days in January really stood out for us. Financials, not much has hit the books yet um, on the expense side. Um, highlighted in blue is uh, the line item for our staffing services. The January and February bills are yet to come at around 20000 each. And then after factoring those in, um, between these two months, we're sitting at about 75% of budget utilized uh, out of 100 with about 25,000 left uh, in savings. Revenue through the end of February 
passenger fares looks a little bit down, um, sitting at about 56% of where it should be. All of the other line items in here are some are quarterly payments we get from the city, um, biannual payments we get from Stout, and um, the WizDOT revenue comes in kind of sporadic through the year. So um, my main focus was just looking at the passenger fares and seeing where we're at compared to where we should be at. Um, still looking a little down, but uh, we have a few other cash deposits um, that always get deposited every other Thursday that are going in tomorrow. Electrics bus update. Uh, this came in last week. Uh, this is from Thomas from Phoenix Bus. Their subcontractor, BTC, who was providing the chargers for us. They had a mass employee walkout here this winter within the past couple months. So they canceled um, the charger order from BTC and they went and ordered replacement 60 kilowatt charger, which actually has a little bit better specs from the new vendor. They'll honor the same pricing and the lead time was about eight to 10 weeks, um, but Phoenix Motor Cars buyer is working to cut that lead time down. Uh, so just keeping everybody in the loop on that. Uh, WizDOT also told us that the electric buses should be in the final weeks of electrifying uh, within these next two weeks or so, and then be sent to that Altoona testing facility um, so they can get final approval to get shipped to us. So um, I'm gonna conservatively say that hopefully it's about the same lead time as these chargers. Staffing, we lost one driver, uh, just didn't show up one day and uh, didn't hear from him again. That happened in uh, the end of January. Uh, we added another dispatcher um, so that one of those two drivers uh, can fill in more on driving shifts if we need. So I've ran uh, Facebook ads for two months, even though the staffing agency should take care of staffing our employees um we've ran ads ourselves and that helped get us our last two drivers but um the applications haven't been coming in so we'll take the help where we can get it uh to free up a few hours for one of those main dispatchers bruce to be able to hop in a bus and drive a shift um, a week around the shop uh, this month focus was oil changes with being a little short staffed. It's a little bit harder to get two drivers to get buses up to Northtown Ford in a timely manner. Um, for what they were charging us for oil change is very reasonable at $54, but the whole getting it over there and getting it back is a half hour round trip for two different drivers to be able to get this done. Um, so it's hard to keep these buses uh, in spec for getting them changed uh, with us being down two buses currently uh, at shops. So um, went through auto value for buying oil in bulk. Uh, the picture on the left is a six gallon bag in a box of oil with its own um, nice pour spout coming in at 433 a gallon for full synthetic. Uh, it's Valvoline full synthetic with the parts master brand on it. So it's good oil, a lot better than we're getting at Northtown Ford. And then Coming into the filter, it's still coming in at 36 bucks on oil change compared to 54 for full synthetic. Um, that with eliminating the round trip uh, for two drivers, that really helped. And then we're able to do this at transit with about 10 minutes off the road, which we could do on the lunch break, or um, we could do after the bus gets back from its shift before we all head out for the day from between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Um, around the buses. So uh, we've ran into some uh, heater resistor problems on these buses. They get real dusty and real dirty. A few have burnt out. Um, something we've had to overcome is sourcing the parts for these, which are pretty vague on what they are. Um, so after some pretty in-depth Google searching, we found some and sourced them. Now we have some backup parts 
uh, for these. Most of them match the different buses that we have. Uh, so we have a few extras now, a few resistors, a few extra blower fans. Um, uh, we've seen some cost savings on that compared to if we had to take it to Badger Refrigeration or somebody else over in Eau Claire like in the past. And then uh, the picture on the right is bus 317. That's one of our newer uh, mini buses. Uh, when it got real foggy last November, that bus went off the road and nobody was on the bus. Um, and uh, that bus had some damage that was sustained to that. And up until two weeks ago, we didn't have approval yet to get it worked on. So that put us down a bus for three months now. And we got approval for that. So that bus will be going in to get fixed over at NUS Truck Repair over in Eau Claire. And it'll be nice to get that bus back on the road, considering it was one of our main new buses. Around the office, uh, this last month, we had our annual cross-connection control annual performance test. This is uh, all the water lines that are in the building. TL SINS does it every March. They came out and did that. And then I had a few questions for them. I'm not a plumber, so I didn't really know um, what we should be doing, um, what we shouldn't be doing when it comes to all the sand that comes out on these, off these buses. We wash them as good as we can, but sand still ends up in the drain. And the picture to the right, um, there's all these skinny trough drains that run perpendicular in the shop here underneath the buses that uh, feeds into this. And then this is actually a, a sand trap that uh, should just be pumped out periodically. And it makes it so the sand doesn't get into uh, these little C shaped couplings that takes the main water out of these traps and leaves the sand in the bottom. So TL since came out since I've been here, um, we've never had it pumped. So we had all the sand and debris pumped out of these drain catches, so that's taken care of, and it smells a lot better, too, um, with uh, it being taken care of. Any questions on any of the information today? Kelly, go ahead. Um, I was curious what the process for getting the um, repairs authorized is that dot or insurance or i'm just wondering that sounds like it took a long time and i was Absolutely. curious so that could be streamlined right um so one thing that we run into is it being a bus compared to uh, a pickup or a car so most of the local body shops that can normally fit a vehicle inside um the is the issue isn't the 10 foot door the issue is the paint booth uh, i guess so um, that takes our pool of body shops down. And then um, everybody's so backed up with uh, not having enough help around. So then some, some of these companies don't even want to take it on. So um, we finally got somebody out in right before New Year's. Um, two weeks later, puts us into the middle of January. They got our estimate back. Um, the guy who did our estimate doesn't work for us truck anymore. Um, and uh, finally got a hold of somebody uh, two days ago uh, to try to schedule this bus to get in. Um, but it's been a bit of a, a mess. But long story short, size of the vehicle, what panels are screwed up on it. So we've got to fit, find a place that the whole vehicle fits inside the booth. And um, a big thing we waited on was getting approval from uh, our corporate insurance company uh, with the cost of this bill. Um, Great, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Austin? One last thing. Uh, the uh, one positive uh, facilities took care of our clock tower shelter um, that was pretty mangled from um, that truck receiver hitch hitting the frame. And it, it, uh, it bent up the whole structure a little bit pretty bad. So um, but they got it straightened out. They got new parts in, new glass, so that is back in business. Um, and then I have a local uh, window washing company coming. Uh, I tried to get them last week when it was 40. Um, but next time it's uh, warm out 
he'll uh, touch those all up as well. Any other questions or? So, so I just want to make the electric buses, what are, what's the kind of the time frame? What are you thinking on those? I'm, the way that WizDOT is portraying it to me is that it's sitting around the same timeline as those new chargers. Mm -hmm. We'd put them eight to 10 weeks out, but um, I'm very reluctant to say timeframes with yeah. um, the amount of times I've said timeframes, but <laughs> just relaying what they've said to me, um, Steve from WizDOT has said, it's in the final weeks of getting electrified and then it goes to uh, that testing site over on the East coast um, for, I believe two weeks, depending on what they're um, how backed up they are. And then it gets delivered. Okay. Hope the chargers get here first, but not by much. Um, <laughs> we have a credit should have a credit through XL energy for 60 days or something like that for, um, uh, free energy uh, whenever they get hooked up. The time clock starts. So I'll relay any good or, or uh, uh, all information that I have when, when it comes in. Yeah, it'd be nice to get those on the roads with high fuel prices. So. Yeah. Uh, anything else? If not, I don't, I don't have anything else. I guess we can adjourn. Um, Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. On to Kelly and Highway. Thank you. I don't know, 17 minutes. You're running long there. <laughs> I know. And I got to go to a meeting here soon, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, since we are agenda for 8.15, that'll let us go ahead and hop straight on into Highway. I'm going to call the highway meeting to order, uh, call the roll, let us show that everyone is here, plus uh, a number of members of staff and Chair uh, Bartlett, and on to approval of the minutes. So moved. Seconded. Uh, motion by Supervisor Brock now, second by Supervisor Maves. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, public comment. Um, I believe we have someone from the Potter's Field, uh, friends of Potter's Field. We have David Williams, and I admitted him. Great, thank you. All right, looks like you are on and unmuted. Go ahead, David. Thank you, good morning. Um, my name is Dave Williams. I'm a co-founder and treasurer of the Friends of Potter's Field, a group we founded to rescue the cemetery that had been suffering decades of neglect. We have brought it back to be a decent cemetery. We've researched the burials there and currently have approximately 110 that we know of. We've established a veterans memorial to honor the six vets that we know are buried there. And since our founding, we've been working to try to gain a different access to the cemetery. Currently, any of our visitors have to go through the county highway shop yard, uh, dodge the machinery and the piles that are there. Uh, and the yard is, of course, not available uh, evenings in the summer or weekends when genealogists frequently like to go to cemeteries and do their research. So we've worked to try to gain access, uh, the idea that I think was proposed way back when Jesse Rintala was the highway commissioner and then followed by John Swarsky was to fence the, the cemeteries west and southern sides 
and then run a fence parallel to that down to the old highway um, wayside. Uh, Dustin has gotten a bid of about $24,000 to do that fencing. We have in our coffers right now just over $19,000 we can apply to it today uh, to get it started and we will raise the additional $5,000 that would be needed if you agree to go ahead with this. My request of you today is hopefully to approve this, this project enough to get the fencing uh, purchase before the prices go up again. We all know that inflation is hitting and uh, we, we can handle the cost of that at this time. I don't know what will happen if we have to wait a while and the price will inevitably go up and that makes it more difficult for us to raise the money. So that's the, the drift of my request um, that you would agree with the fencing company to purchase the fence, have them install as much of it as they could. I know that it's not in your budget right now to do the, the interior work or grading and graveling. Uh, it's not in your budget, but we can wait on that until a year or two in the future when you do have that option. But this would at least secure the fencing and ultimately make the the yard more secure when people are there to visit the cemetery. Uh, I can't blame you for not really wanting the public driving through your shop yard. It's uh, less than ideal. So we think our solution would take care of that for you. It would provide better access for the public who want to visit the cemetery. It's an important part of our county's history. That's why we have been working on this for the 10 years. These are people who helped build the county unfortunately weren't lucky enough to have money to um, take care of their own burials or their families and the county did that. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Uh, again, my plea is please consider accepting this bid. Uh, I can deliver that $19,000 check to the county today if you want it. Uh, and I can give you a letter which will guarantee the other 5,000 to cover the rest of it. So I don't think you will be out anything to do the fencing, but questions are welcome. Great, thank you, Dave. I, I believe that the committee is, is broadly in agreement that this is a good plan, but I would, if anyone has any questions for Dave at the moment, um, that would be great. Otherwise we will take this up um, as soon as we get to considerations for actions. And does anyone have anything want, they wanna add or ask? Um, it does not look like it. I think you gave us a, a very solid presentation there. Thank you. Do you want me to stay on the in the meeting to the end, or would you rather I went away? What's <laughs> what are your druthers? Uh, it, it's entirely up to you. I I, I will I, with with the permission of the committee, I will bump the uh, item E in consideration to the top of the actions. If you stay around, if not, um, we'll probably leave it where it is. So if you're, if you want to stay, you're welcome, but, um, I don't think there's any, any particular need if you have other things you'd rather do. Oh, I'd love to sit around and watch you do your work. So if you, if you're gracious enough to move it to the top of actions, I'd appreciate it. And I'll mute myself and just wait for you then. All right. Um, I doesn't look like anyone's going to object to that. So when we get to actions, I will I will bump that up. Um, items placed at the request of the chair, non-staff reports. Um, Dustin, over to you. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, just want to make sure I'm not muted so everybody can hear me. Um, so yeah, just uh, go through the staff reports uh, that are currently uh, that we're we're doing here at Highway. Uh, we. Obviously, it's that, that time of the year where potholes start forming um, with the, the spring thaw, um, which is right around the corner here. Uh, so we continue to uh, fill potholes, uh, cut brush um, on the state and county system, uh, do the routine maintenance repairs uh, of our plow trucks uh, with these last snowstorms that we had. Uh, they actually, we saw a lot more plow trucks coming in here just with some, some routine repairs. Um, so yeah, we... We're looking at trying to do that. Um, just keep up with uh, filling potholes every day is what it seems like. Uh, with the project updates, uh, we are 
looking at uh, the county trunk B project uh, is, is still on track. I do have a meeting with the uh, the engineers that are designing it, uh, as well as the city of Menominee um, to go over the project uh, in detail with them. Uh, there is some, some questions regarding the limits of the uh, intersections. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, getting some support with uh, the city of Menominee um, to maybe help offset some of the costs uh, associated with those intersections. Uh, so that, that's a discussion we're gonna have next week uh, with the engineering firm, as well as the city of Menominee. Uh, any of the bridge updates? Uh, I currently do not have any updated information on the, the two bridges that are gonna be replaced this summer on County Road Q and K. Um, I'm expecting some uh, um, pre-con uh, meetings to be set up here shortly um, before that uh, project starts. Any questions before I go on? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, equipment purchases. Um, just to keep you up to date with that, we have started the process uh, of purchasing some of the equipment that we we felt was a, a huge uh, need currently. Um, I've started the process of purchasing two of the arrow boards um, through the DOT contract. Uh, so we should be seeing those uh, shortly here, probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we did start the process of trading in our screen plant, our sand screen plant. Uh, and working with uh, finance to get uh, assets put together for, for purchasing the back, the, the excavator, the track excavator. Um, so that's in the process uh, of getting work done. Uh, I've also started the process of purchasing the, the engineering pickup, um, the one that we were leasing. Uh, so we, we worked with finance on that to start the process and we should be seeing that transaction here shortly. Uh, with the, the title um, in hand, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks here. Um, other than that, for the equipment purchases, that's all we've really gone through right now. We are um, renting the um, chipper yet uh, through the DOT um, currently. And if the chipper works out for us, uh, we will be, that will be the one that we will be purchasing. Um, so that was provided with the, the last meeting uh, of the, the chipper that we were looking at purchasing. Um, the financial status uh, in the packet, uh, we did provide the, the financials. Uh, highway and finance, we continue to work uh, diligently together. Um, we have uh, weekly meetings currently with uh, finance, just regarding the whole process from start to finish uh, with the whole invoicing, um, accounts payable, every, everything. Um, uh, Beata has been a huge help. Sarah has been a huge help on this. Uh, internal staff's been a huge help um, just to get everybody on the same page. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing. And so we can just track our finances um, going forward. The month of uh, January um, was for an expense, expenses was probably uh, just over, I believe a million dollars um, due to uh, winter maintenance. Uh, and that obviously is estate and everything else in there that has not been accounted for, for revenue. Um, so that's, that number is skewed slightly. So um, just wanted to be aware of that. Any questions regarding the financials? And mind you, we, ha we haven't gotten into the, uh, the, the, the summer season where the financials will still really start uh, going, but. If there's no questions, we'll continue on. Um, the O'Galley Salt Shed. Uh, so, the project uh, was originally uh, a go on the DOT side um, to put a, a new shed, a thousand ton capacity salt shed down in O'Galley. Uh, I put it on hold for a period of time um, due to some updated inspections to all of our salt sheds in within Dunn County. 
Uh, the report came in that we have five sheds in Dunn County that are in poor condition. In, in poor condition, basically the three sheds in Menominee, as well as one in Colfax, um, and then I believe Boysville is the other one that are in poor condition. Um, I had a meeting, uh, Nick and myself had a meeting with uh, the DOT yesterday um, regarding the, this shed. Um, we got some more information on it. We are looking at a five-year long-term plan to address address these poor um, condition salt sheds. Um, talking with the DOT yesterday, the O'Galley shed is still something they want to see um, happen. And we will address the other sheds that are in poor conditions uh, with a five-year plan. Um, they are very open from the meeting that we had yesterday to, to address that. Um, they were obviously unaware of the situation we had in Dunn County um, with our need for the salt shed uh, um, replacements. Um, so, like I said, Nick and I, we, we, we sat down with them yesterday. Uh, I believe looking through it, it's, it's probably going to happen with the Old Galley salt shed. It's just we got to work out some, some minor details of what type of shed we're looking at and if we have the funding source uh, available to do that. Um, so like I said, it, it's, it's going forward, but, uh, I, I want a little bit more clarification on, uh, the poor, poor quality, uh, sheds that are currently needs to be addressed. Uh, any questions with that? Um, <laughs> Supervisor Johnson and then, Super, and then Chair Bartlett. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Dustin, what do you mean they're in poor condition and you're looking at a five-year project is that replacement uh but new roofs on them what's the matter with them so the the structures that we currently have are, are timber structures um they're older structures um over time the the timber starts to deteriorate so the walls are starting to deteriorate um we do have some structural issues uh, obviously when you start putting um thousand ton capacity salt in there and we're using loaders to push on it all the time to get the material out. It, it has a tendency to start moving some of the wall structure. Um, so what I have expressed to them is, is replacement. Um, to me, it's not worth putting in the money to repair them. Um, we are looking at the possibility of putting timber structures back in or going with a hoop style shed. Um, that's up to the discretion of the county, what we want to see. So uh, that that's the big thing. And we, I, I did address the, if there is any capital needs, let's say a, a roof needs to be addressed um, 20 years from now, the roof reason needs to be repaired. We can submit to the state to get that reimbursed. Um, so any type of capital improvements like that, we can, we can definitely talk to the DOT on getting funding um for that dave yeah you mentioned funding when funding becomes available uh it was my understanding the o'galley shed the state was going to, to pay for that correct would, would they be funding the other ones also correct okay Yep. So that, and right now there, there's a large need with throughout the state for um, salt sheds um, replacements, and they only have enough money to go around. So we would have to kind of spread this out over the, the next five years. Right. Um, so we may be able to get the, just say the town or a Colfax shop might, might get a new shed next year um, type of thing. And they would, they would pay for the upfront cost on it. Um, but that's something that we're currently working on right now to come up with a five-year plan. Right. So it's their funding that we're concerned with, not ours. Correct. All right. Thank you. And then I have just a quick question. Hoop style shed, is that like the low concrete walls and then the... Yep. Okay. Yeah. In, in talking with the DOT yesterday, they, they kind of want to steer away from that because the life expectancy isn't as long as a timber structure. 
um, but it's up to our our discretion. So they they don't dictate what what we put in there. Um, but they were concerned with the the hoop style sheds not lasting as long as they say they do. Um, okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure I was clear on what we were talking about. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Um, the highway roof uh, RFP requests. Um, I submitted that uh, to um, our HR staff to start the process to submit uh, proposals. Uh, so that process has started. Um, we are looking at uh, March 28th for a proposal deadline. Um, we are scheduled next week to have a walkthrough of the building with potential uh, contractors that are interested in the project. Um, like I said, currently, obviously there's nothing funded for this to, to the roof repairs. Uh, there is possible carryovers from, from the judicial center uh, from, from that project uh, last year. So right now it's basically numbers. We're just looking to see how much it is going to cost and if we can, we can squeak it in this year uh, with possible carryover funds um, from the judicial center or capital improvement, uh, we'll, we'll have to look into that. But right now it's just trying to get budgetary numbers um, and we can go forward on that. Um, it would be nice to replace it this year, but if that's something we have to look at uh, doing next year, we'll have to budget for it accordingly. So, um, but yeah, that process has started and we're looking at March 28th for the, the proposal deadline. Any questions? Okay. Um, the fender quarry and drilling and blasting, uh, that has started. Uh, we hired uh, Quick Supply to, to do the blasting. The first shot they did uh, was last week, Friday. Uh, the second shot they are looking at doing this week, Wednesday. Um, from what I've been told, the first shot uh, went well. We are looking at approximately 50,000 tons of material to crush um, once it is completed. Um, so we're looking at uh, probably starting that uh, sometime in late March, maybe uh, early April to, to start the crushing of uh, uh, lime rock materials for, for highway purposes. So uh, everything's gone well on that and we, we're looking forward to starting that process of, of crushing in the, in the near future here. The Last item on my staff report is the Wisconsin DOT SALT agreement. Um, it's unfortunate, but we have to think about uh, SALT for, for next winter, um, the 2022 and 2023 uh, budget. Um, so I put a quantity together to go through the DOT contract. They are actually looking at rebidding SALT materials for the next, next season's um, uh, SALT agreement. Uh, and we, we Typically, a lot of counties piggyback the, the state contract. Um, due to the volume uh, of the salt that's purchased through the state, uh, we get a better price that way. Um, so I did put a, a uh, quantity in to, to the DOT of approximately 1,000 tons that, uh, of salt material, which is the average of what we utilize to make salt sand every year. Um, we do have a carryover of salt uh, currently. I think we have approximately about a thousand tons uh, in our in our shed right now. Um, so, like I said, I just wanted you to be aware that uh, we have started that process to to renew the salt contract through the DOT, um, and we're we're probably looking at an increase. Uh, that's almost inevitable. That's going to happen. Approximately about seventy five dollars a ton is what we're paying this year. Um, we're probably looking at upwards to 80 to 85 next year. Um, so that'll be up to the DOT to, to send out the, the bid proposals for that, to, for contractors to supply the, su supply the salt. Um, unfortunately, we, we have to utilize salt and this money out the door, it seems like, uh, when we purchase something like that, we have nothing to show for it. So, um, but we need to. 
So that concludes my staff report. Um, any questions before we get into the action items? Dave? Yeah, I'd like to go back to the equipment one. Um, where are we at with uh, the skid skid loaders? Have we? So the, the skid steers don't come up in, until I believe it's June um, okay. before we can roll them out. So we're, right. still on, we're still on the old contract yet. All right. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Um, looks like we can move on to considerations for actions. And if no one has any objections, I will bump the potter's field fencing up to uh, the top here. Okay. Um, oh, ahead, Chuck. Yep. You just muted yourself, Chuck. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I, I have a, a, I guess it'd be a legal question for corporate counsel. As far as if, if we go along with the, is the, the creating the, the driveway, call it that, would that have to be an easement to the cemetery or how, how would that work legally if we're creating a driveway? on county land like that? Is, is that an easement process or how, how, how would that be? There, I think I got it. Uh, <clears throat> well, if it's all on county land, I don't know that there's anybody to give an easement to. Uh, I suppose we could just cr create an easement dedicated to public access uh, for that. Um, I think the cemetery is also on county land. Um, yep. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything critical that needs to be done in order to achieve access and security for the highway department yard, but it's definitely something that could be looked at. It's, it's really a matter of, you know, determining how long, you know, how long access uh, should be given or provided, you know, I'm in by all appearances, it looks like, you know, in perpetuity, but um, it certainly could be done. We could just dedicate it. Uh, I'd have to talk to the land uh, or the uh, surveyor to see what niceties uh, we'd have to do, what technical aspects we'd have to do for that. Um, but it could be done. It could be done and it wouldn't be, it's not necessary, but it certainly could be done and it would be very convenient for um, anybody who's interested in having access. Okay, thank you. Okay. So oh, Dave? The, the fence that you're proposing, would that go inside the fence that we have now? So there'd be a lane there or would it go outside the fence we have now? So that that would be inside. It would be inside our existing fence that's currently okay. there. Um, I did sp speak with uh, Randy from the city of Menominee about the possible access on city property, uh, the airport property, um, and <laughs> he sent me an email. Actually, this this start, dated back into about 2012. Um, and at that time, Jesse actually approached uh, that as an option. And at that time, the airport uh, denied it um, due to safety reasons and um, possibly losing some funding due to it. Um, so they would not uh, allow any type of fencing or any type of um, access onto that airport property. Um, so that that kind of leads us back into this. Do we put a fence within our fence or do we utilize the, the same process that we've been utilizing for um, since the, the beginning of time where individuals come through our yard? Um, we do have, obviously there is a cost. Uh, we do have trees to remove, um, stumps to remove along the fence line. Um, there would have to be some gravel placed, an entrance made off of the, the town road, um, which I have spoke to the town of Red Cedar regarding, and they don't have an issue with us installing a, an entrance off of their town road. Um, 
we we have the cost obviously for the fencing um the low bid there from hs fence company was 23.989 um they are a, a company over by fall creek um and i have spoken to them they have agreed that that is a firm price that uh, they will honor um since we've got these uh, bid proposals back in i believe february um so they were telling me they will still honor that price um like i said we have two options we either install a fence uh within our fence or we we kind of currently keep as is and um allow people to come through our yard uh, which potentially could be a liability factor um with equipment um running uh we do get requests on weekends and we do we do allow individuals to come in i've spoken with our hr department they would like to see a, a dunn county highway employee to be present um, if any type of activity is going on on weekends if a, um, a classroom wants to come out there or something like that or do a research project or something they they would love to see a, a highway employee be present um, so that's not always attainable sometimes um, we do have a automated gate system at our highway shop um, that i can open from my house if i need to um, to allow people in but we don't necessarily have individuals staffed here obviously on weekends to provide accommodations to that so there will be added costs uh, like i said outside of that nineteen thousand that the the group has um currently there is nothing budgeted for it so we would have to try to find uh, some some additional funding source to 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 accommodate that so and if i may how much more have you estimated that you would need to to make a road in there so i i've estimated uh depending on how how in detail we want if we are putting gravel if we're excavating this the the topsoil putting gravel in or if we would just build uh um, a gravel roadway to the fence line and then drive on the grass after that um that'd be something we'd have to look into um but i would estimate uh, there's probably about thirty five hundred dollars worth of tree removal we would have to to do um and then i would probably say approximately another ten thousand dollars to to put a, an actual roadway gravel approach in with a culvert and all that um and that would be to the fence line um, so that's the minimum it's going to cost us and then <clears throat> one last excuse me one last question is there plenty of room for that it won't uh, impede highway operations once you get inside the fence and the lane is there. And I imagine somewhat of a parking lot down by Potter's Field. It, it will not impede any of our, our daily operations. Uh, we do have one, um, our main lime rock stockpile uh, that we would have to move slightly. Um, there's approximately, I don't know, maybe 25 feet of lime rock we would have to to move um but currently we we do not utilize the the yard where the potter cemetery is um there is a little parking area there that we do not utilize um but we would have to do some some moving of materials and some tree logs and stuff that we've hauled in here over the years and um the biggest thing right now is we would have to remove the trees and just to accommodate the fencing installed currently um, and talking like with Dave is we we could do this in a process maybe just put the fence up this year and then maybe next year look at installing the entrance um, so that we can spread it out over time. Brian, Dustin wouldn't it be a whole lot easier to put the road in and then the fence you don't have to worry about how wide is the area it's probably been mentioned, but so what I guess what I was looking at is just having about a 20 or 25 foot lane um, that we can actually just get two vehicles side by side if need be in and out. Um, we are installing, uh, we would be proposing to install a 12 foot 
wide gate opening um, at the current fence. Um, that's right next to the, the old park. Uh, there used to be the old rest area there. Uh, so we would, we would put a 12 foot gate in there, um, padlock it if we would need to, or whatever, give uh, 24 hour access. That'd be up to what we would want to do with it. So maybe not even lock it. We just have individuals close it when they're not uh, utilizing it. Um, so like I said, the, uh, the biggest thing right now is the, the cost of the fence fluctuates year after year after year. Um, our materials and our culvert prices and seem to kind of stay the same. So we, we can really look at doing that in the future um, if need be. Anyone else? Yeah. I'm just going. Okay, Randy. Yeah, I mean, if we just did the fence now, I mean, would it be, I mean, they could still walk in through the fence so they wouldn't have to go through the yard or what's the deal with that? Correct. And who would maintain in between the two fences, I guess? That, that'd be a discussion we would have to have. Um, obviously, in the wintertime, uh, we would probably have to remove the snow um, if, if needs access. Um, we don't typically see a whole lot of action in the winter time, um, from what I from what I've seen. Um, it's traditionally in in the summer months where mowing operations, obviously warmer weather, where you can see the the grave sites and all that stuff. So, um, I don't I don't anticipate a lot of maintenance needed. Um, Dave, you have your hand up. I saw your head go with the snow, so I'm guessing you have a comment there. We, uh, we don't. Other Dave, sorry. I'm sorry, which Dave? Dave Williams or Dave Bart? Yes, Dave sorry. Williams. Um, we don't need it opened in the winter. Genealogists and history people don't wander cemeteries in the winter, so it could just stay locked or closed. We do need access to mow. I'm, I'm one of the two mowers out there, and we, one way or the other, we would need to get in and either come down by the old wayside area or else through the yard while we're waiting for the project to finish. So, but nothing in the winter. Great, thank you. So it, it seems to me um, that we have the opportunity to get the fence in uh, now at no cost to the county um, with the, some probably immediate impacts on uh, county liability by getting by at least riding some of the traffic not through the yard um, and the rest can be sorted out later that seems like a, a relatively straightforward proposal to me does does anyone else have anything they want to add i agree with you kelly but you're going to want to get them trees and stumps out of there before you put that fence in correct dustin yeah the, like i said there'll, there'll be some cost to the county to remove those trees yeah. Um, and then, so the group has 19,000, like I said, right now. So if, just to pay for the, the fencing, we, we would have to put a, a portion of the county um, money into it. <clears throat> and that would be approximately $5,000 just for the, the fencing materials. And Dave, it's Dave Williams had suggested that we would then they would reimburse the county as that as that money comes in, correct? Okay. Uh, Dave Bartlett. Well, you know, I I guess I'm I'm leaning for this. I I would support it because I think it's I think it's worth something for uh, for the county to not have to have that added liability. And those, you know, if, like Dustin said, if, if we'd like someone there when they're, if we have to open it on the weekend, we'd like a county employee there. Well, that's added costs. Uh, Dustin's going to be able to weigh what those added costs are compared to, to uh, the costs of getting the trees out and, and putting a culvert in. He may decide to do it sooner rather than later so he doesn't have to put up with the liability and those other concerns that would be up to him 
yeah, it seems like a relatively small cost. Randy, did you have a? I agree. I think, you know, I, I think it would be a good benefit to go ahead with it. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, then I would need a motion to go ahead and allow the fence installation um, with the letter to come along with it for the rest of the fence costs as, as that funding is raised. Mr. Uh, Chair, so I'll, make, I'll make that motion that we move forward on the project. Thank you, motion by Supervisor Maves. I'll second. second. Great, second by Supervisor Johnson. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, looks like you get your fence, Dave. Thank you. Uh, when do you want the nineteen thousand uh, dollars? You, Dustin, do you want to work that out between you, or do you just want to? And I can walk it out there today if you want it. Let 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 me talk talk to the the fencing company. Um, they just to get their schedule. Um, on that and then we can touch base on that. And I will gladly also give you a letter pledging the other 5,000 as soon as we raise it. We'll go to work now that we know we can do the project, but we will have the money for you. So just, yeah, I'll wait to hear from you, Dustin. I appreciate it, Dave. And I, and I appreciate everything you have done for the, the uh, Potter's Field Cemetery. You guys have done a great job to resurrect that. If you're yeah, all free, if you're all free on Memorial Day, come on out for the Veterans Tribute. We do that every year, and the Chippewa Valley Learning and Retirement on May 24th is going to have a program about the the research that our UWO Claire partners are doing on ground penetrating radar and trying to determine where the grave sites are actually at. So we've got some interesting research coming out as well, and, uh, but. Thank you for your vote this morning. I will wait to hear from Dustin and I appreciate your partnership on this. Thank you. Great, thank and you. Thank you for moving me to the front of the, of the action. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I will leave you to your meeting. Okay. Um, that takes us back to item A. Uh, the vouchers. Any questions on the vouchers? I make a move that we approve the vouchers. Thank you, Randy. Uh, motion by Supervisor Proc. Now, do I have a second? Supervisor Johnson. Uh, motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Let me note the uh, the new format for the um, vouchers is much more readable. It's 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 much easier to understand what's going on with it. I I really appreciate that. Um, rubber sealant quotes. Yeah, so I attached I attached in your packet. Um, I solicited uh, proposals for the rubber sealant for, for crack filling um, on the county system, state roads, uh, whatever um, we utilize it for. Um, so I did get two individuals, two companies to submit proposals, uh, Conrad Materials and Sherwin Industries. Um, they're, they're almost identical prices. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. The price from this year to last year is approximately 10 cents higher than what it was uh, last year. Um, so I, I guess my, my recommendation is to go with the, the Sherwin Industries for the Crafco 221 product. Um, and that is based on a full truckload of 45,000 pounds of material um, that we typically purchase on a yearly basis. So and like I said, some of that material will be going to the state roads, county roads, town roads. So Dustin, that was 10 cents a pound higher? Approximately 10 cents a pound higher um, okay. from last year to this year. Uh, Supervisor Maves. Uh, based on Dustin's recommendation, I make a motion we go with Sherwin. Second. All right. 
Motion made by Supervisor Maeve, second by Supervisor Prochnow to go with the Sherwin Industries. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we're good to go there. Next item, ridge inspection proposals. So in your packet, I have attached the um, annual bridge inspections that uh, Dunn County uh, needs to complete. Uh, it's in every, every two year cycle. Uh, so in 2022, this is our, our annual cycle that we have to inspect uh, uh, every bridge in Dunn County on the county system as well as the town, town system. Um, so I've solicited bids for that. Um, we started doing that approximately a couple of years ago. Um, the, the three firms that submitted proposals was Core Engineers out of Eau Claire, KBIS, uh, they are out of Park Falls, and then Cedar Corporation out of Menominee. Um, KBIS uh, did our, our last uh, annual inspections, um, so they are familiar with all of our bridges. Um, so that is why tip, typically you will see the uh, cost less than the other two firms. Uh, at 147, a bridge, I unfortunately cannot inspect those bridges for 147. I can't even do it for that cheap. Um, so it's a it, it's it's a no brainer the to to uh, proceed with KBIS as as inspecting our bridges. Uh, they they do dive inspections. They they are a very good firm to work with work with from what I have uh, experienced with them. Um, so that's my recommendation to proceed with KBIS. Um, just so you're aware, the county portion is the only portion that we would have to pay, um, that 11319 uh, The grand total would be 22050 if all the towns in Dunn County go on board with the county's contract. Um, so what we would have to pay out of the county portion would be 11319 to inspect uh, um, the 75 county-owned bridges. Um, the other 75 are town, town and city and village structures. So that's my recommendation is to proceed with KBIS for the annual bridge inspections. Supervisor Johnson. I move we go with KBIS for the bridge inspection. Motion by Supervisor Johnson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, second by Supervisor Brock now. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. KBIS it is. That's a great price, and I'm kind of shocked at how much higher Cedar Corporate came in. Okay. Um, traffic sign proposals. So, um, I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, we, we've started a blanket replacement of county roadway uh, signs. Um, we started that approximately, I would say about four or five years ago. Um, we do certain sections of, of Dunn County at a time. Uh, we know that we, we financially can't afford to replace every county sign in the whole county. Um, so we've, we've spread uh, sections of this uh, county into approximately seven sections. Uh, signs, signs approximately have a 10 year useful life. Um, so we have to kind of just keep rotating that out. So we, we try to put it on a, a cycle. Um, so this, this year we propose to do the roadways um, up by the NAP area, uh, Q, O, K, um, all those roads. So we would be replacing every sign, um, including stop signs, night arrows, advisory speeds, um, all, all those signs. Um, the last time we've replaced those signs were approximately in 2007. Um, some of them are newer, some of them are older. So we we just have to keep keep going and uh, get on a, on a schedule rotation. Uh, so we solicited bids uh, to uh, quite a few firms. Um, low bid was uh, Renaflash in the amount of 
Um, that is my recommendation to proceed with Renaflash for the purchase of those signs. Uh, that is a very, very good price. Um, considering uh, the prices of uh, signs are going up and we were greatly uh, surprised by that price. And we worked with Renaflash in the past, uh, the past, I would say two or three cycles, we've gone with Renaflash signs and they've worked out great. Um, so that's my recommendation is to proceed with Renaflash for, for purchasing those signs for, for 2022. Supervisor Arton. The county installs them then and they install new posts too besides or just put a sign on the post? If the post needs to be replaced, we will replace it, but otherwise the posts stay there and we would just replace the sign. Um, county staff does that internally. More questions? Uh, Brian. Oh, you're, you're muted. I move we go with rent -a flash to replace the signs. Thanks. Uh, motion by Supervisor Johnson. Do I have a second? I second. Super Supervisor Hartung. Uh, motion by Supervisor Johnson. Second by Supervisor Hartung. Any further discussion? Ah, excuse me. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Rent a flash. It is. Uh, Traffic signs proposals, we already dealt with the potter's field fencing, seasonal weight restrictions. It's that time of year. Uh, our, our phones have been ringing off the hook. When are we going to put weight restrictions on? Um, so I, I don't know if, if any of you have in the past know the entire operations of our, of our seasonal weight restrictions, what roads are weight restricted, which ones aren't. Um, so I just wanted to enlighten you on that. Um, so I've attached the map of what we have weight restricted, seasonal weight restricted in the past. Um, the, the roads that are highlighted in red are the ones that we would be putting a safe seasonal weight restriction on. Uh, the weight restriction is, is five ton per axle. Uh, we tried to simplify it uh, last year. We, we typically used to have a six ton per axle, single axle formation and a 10 ton tandem axle. It just got to be very complicated. Um, so we just simplified it and put a five ton per axle weight, weight restriction. Uh, obviously the roads uh, would have to be signed um, accordingly. Uh, we did purchase last year permanent signs that are at these locations currently. Uh, that's all we have to do is flip them down. Um, so that's a huge, huge improvement there. Um, I guess uh, the, the, big, the big question is when, when are we going to start uh, the weight restrictions? Um, looking at the long-term forecast, it's probably going to happen next week um, sometime. Uh, other counties around us, uh, in particular down south, like uh, Pepin, uh, Buffalo, Trempolo, and Jackson, I believe they are putting theirs on Monday, uh, the 14th. Uh, I'm looking at trying to possibly address uh, maybe tomorrow um, about implementing them on Monday or maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, but like to kind of just follow suit with the counties around us just to make it uniform. Uh, the big question that uh, what I'm asking for on the, the county level and the, the highway committee is in the past, we have allowed exemptions. Um, not necessarily a written exemption. It was more verbal exemptions. Um, we can continue to do that. My issue with this is if we're giving out all these exemptions, then why do we have seasonal weight restrictions? Um, what makes uh, one, one uh, load better than the other? Um, the, only, the only thing that is, is basically exempt is if it's declared an emergency. So if somebody's heating fuel uh, runs out at their house, uh, a, a fuel truck can actually come in on a seasonal weight restricted roadway. Um, 
it's a misconception. Milk trucks are not exempt. Um, concrete trucks, none of, none of that stuff is exempt. So they have to, to, to run on a seasonal weight restricted road, you have to have a divisible load. So basically it has to follow that five ton per axle weight restriction. Uh, we in Dunn County, unfortunately, do not have the ability to enforce it. Um, our sheriff's department does not have scales to enforce uh, these weight restrictions. So we call upon the, 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 the state patrol to um, take any action necessary if we, we find an issue. Um, we've had uh, some contractors that are uh, in particular up in the prairie farm area um, that are hauling uh, uh, waste material uh, to farm fields. Uh, we've given exemptions to that. It has damaged our roads. It's, it, it's something we need to address. Um, my stance is if we're putting seasonal weight restrictions on, the exemptions should only be an emergency situation. Um, I guess that's my what I would like to see. Um, like I said, it's it, it's never ending. We we get phone calls of, in particular, yesterday I received a phone call from um, a contractor that wants to uh, supply concrete to the Cedar Falls Dam. Um, I said, unfortunately, that's the, a divisible load. You can, you can take less concrete in there. You can take, uh, six ton or six yard loads instead of nine yard loads. Um, so we get a lot of that. Um, we get a lot of contractors that are trying to build houses and Menards wants to haul in a, um, timber trusses or something like that. It, it, it gets to the point though, it's like, okay, which one's better than the other? What's, what's allowable and what's not? Um, we try to accommodate the best we can. Um, unfortunately, the, year after year after year, this is a common theme. Everybody knows seasonal weight restrictions come on, but everybody wants an exemption. They want to run every co county road in Dunn County and have a blanket, blanket permit to do so. Um, so it, it's difficult. So that's why I've, I've kind of just requested the highway committee to give me their stance on it. If that's something we want to continue to give out exemptions, or if we say, unfortunately, no, this is standard policy is we only allow it if it's going to be a emergency uh, situation. Um, we understand okay. that people's septic tanks may fill up or something and they need to get pumped. I mean, that, that's, that would be a good prime example that would fall under an exemption. Um, but that's what I just wanted to give you some background information on what we deal with year after year after year. Um, and I just, I want to address it sooner than later because it's, it's, it's a growing concern for me. Okay. Um, comments, questions? Supervisor Hartung. It's a um, maple syrup season too. The maple syrup producers bugging you a lot. They they've asked for exemptions in the past, and we have not okayed it. the The unfortunate thing is, like I said, it's it, a lot of this is not enforced currently. Um, we at the highway department are not the 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 police officers uh, of Dunn County, so. Um, it's almost looked upon, uh, looked at, looked the other way when it, when it's a, a, a commodity such as maple syrup or grain hauling or something like that. It, 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 it it's kind of, like I said, looked, looked away, um, in mm -hmm. the past and I, okay. that's where the difficulty lies. <laughs> Brian. I definitely would support you, Dustin, in emergencies only. I, I, these exemptions, they get out of hand. And uh, I have another question. Uh, it's kind of off it a little bit, but on County V now, you got some new road up there. You don't want them running on that, do you? I see that isn't red. So County Road V was never posted prior to our reconstruction, what we did. 
So we've made improvements to that roadway. So if, if we can make improvements to that roadway, um, we will look at removing the, the weight exemptions on that. Um, it's sand country up there. Um, it drains properly. Um, that's, that's why you don't see a whole lot of sand creek and uh, roads up there. Not to say that they don't get destroyed. There's no d doubt about it. Um, but it just seems like that's more sand country. It's, it drains properly. Um, we, we've just addressed that and we think we've made improvements to that roadway that we do not need to weight restrict it. Um, we have looked at uh, if we have any type of state funding involved on roadways, we will eliminate the weight restriction due to that. Um, like County Road H in particular, just north of Double H. Once that project is complete, we will remove the weight restriction on that. Um, so we're trying to make improvements. So we don't have to have any seasonal weight restrictions, but unfortunately we're, we're, we're behind on that situation. So. Okay. okay so that answers my question. Yep. Um, so are you looking for uh, a motion to um, essentially remove the, any exceptions, but the emergency exceptions or a sense of the committee? What are you, I, I guess what I would be looking at is just the the approval of the 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 map that was provided and our five ton weight restriction. Um, I mean, if we can approve the um, uh, the exemption rule type of thing, I don't know if that's something Nick has to weigh in on. If that's something we can or can't do, I don't know. But uh, okay, yeah, because I think in the past. Um, it's been when to apply the uh, weight restrictions has been at the discretion of the highway commissioner. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to, to give you a motion to, to reaffirm that process. Um, but I, I think since that's already, uh, the process is already at the discretion of the highway commissioner. I don't think we would need a motion for that. Correct. But if you want a sense of the committee or a motion for, uh, denial of anything but emergency exemptions. Um, I think that's where we ask Nick uh, what he has, what his opinion on that is. Um, this is a new topic for me, and I've already started looking into it as soon as you started talking about it. But <clears throat> I uh, haven't gotten to any conclusions yet. I, I, I don't think <clears throat> the, what you're proposing is a bad idea. Uh, I think the county has a right to set some limitations um i but i'll you know i'll continue to look into it and i can report back to dustin and the committee <clears throat> uh later um you know maybe a resolution or some formal policy uh might be sufficient in order to um set things down a little more firmly uh, I mean, the problem with discretion is that it's vulnerable to persuasion and pressure and so forth. So, Okay, so I think probably what we would do today is uh, a sense of the committee to move forward with that um, if we want to encode it as a formal policy. Dustin, does that, would that cover what? All right. Um, are we generally in favor of... Um, enforcing anything but emergency exemptions. Thumbs up, yes. Okay, let's see about getting that um, encoded in whatever is the appropriate way. Um, and Nick, if you'd look into the, the details of that, that would be great. In consult consultation with Dustin. I will. Apparently my, <laughs> thanks Nick. My speaking voice today is, is not what it could be. Um, Dustin, oh, Brian? Dustin, I have one other question. Would you let uh, just shoot an email out when they do go on? Because you wouldn't believe how many phone calls you get once they know you're on the highway committee when all the bands are going on. Absolutely. Great. And anticipate probably sometime next week. Okay. So, Dustin, do you have anything more you want to add on the weight restrictions, or are you good till the next oh, meeting? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, then our next action item is uh, tandem axle plow truck estimates. 
I, I keep I keep reiterating this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just left it in the in the packet. Um, obviously, um, our our tandem axles, and I, I we talked about that on our last uh, February meeting. Um, the the need that we we have with our plow trucks uh, and the possible. Um, looking into purchasing, purchasing these in 2023 and how we're going to pay for it. And that's kind of the discussion we're going to have to have with uh, the whole ARPA funding and, and all that. Um, we have spoken to the international dealer. And right now, like I said, that's what we currently have in house. A lot of our trucks um, it's, it's looking like uh, they're going to open up the, the 2023 bidding here very, very shortly, or if they already haven't. Um, there's only a certain number of uh, uh, openings to, to purchase these, these plow trucks or any type of semis or anything like that. Um, so they've heard they've they've given uh some some warning that we need to act on it sooner than later otherwise we may not be looking at trucks until 2024 currently and that might be a sales pitch but uh i i can't confirm that or not but um i just want to reiterate that we we have a need um and we did we did get estimated costs on providing those those tandem axle trucks um we have the ability to purchase as many as we want right now, according to uh, um, international. Um, and that, I guess that would be my, based on the cost, that would be my recommendation is to go with international trucks just because of our fleet. But uh, so we would be looking at that $141,000 for, for a, a tandem axle plow truck. That's just the truck and chassis. Um, Obviously, there's about approximately another hundred thousand dollars worth of snowplow equipment to add on to that, so it'd be about that two hundred forty-one thousand um, dollars for one one truck, fully equipped. So, like I said, I left it on the agenda. I don't know. That's I just want to just keep re reiterating that we need to act on this uh, sooner than later, and the whole financial thing is going to have to be discussed on how how we pay for it, and that's probably going to happen here. I'm assuming at the the county board meeting uh, coming up here um, shortly. Mm -hmm. Dave, did you? Well, would if we waited until the budget county board meeting to the end of March, would that be soon enough? I I guess I can't say yes or no to that. Um, I would say at this point in time, I mean, if I would I would love to act on it today, but. Um, I, I don't know if it's, uh, due to the financial, um, costs of it. I don't know if that would be the best interest to, to wait and have the whole County board support. I, I, I'm leaving that up to you guys. I think myself, I think that at the workshop, we'll be discussing a lot about the use of ARPA funds. And, and that really has, that's really going to have a big impact on, you know, what we do budget wise in the future, whether we borrow money or we use ARPA funds or whatever. And <clears throat> I don't know that, you know, if we, if we bring it to the county board meeting the first one in March, our regular county board meeting, I just feel that we could have a lot better discussion on the use of ARPA funds and explanation uh, on the whole picture at the budget meeting. I guess, I guess I'm throwing that out there to the other supervisors, what they think also. Um, you know, last year, I believe we, we made some decisions at our regular March meeting on on the use of ARPA funds and and borrowing, and then we had a budget workshop and explained it all to the supervisors. And 
more. And I, w- I was thinking that maybe uh, making those decisions after we have a, a lot more discussion at the budget meeting might be uh, better, you know, a better way to go about it. But I'm throwing that out there. <coughs> Can I, I guess, sorry, Kelly. Go ahead, Dustin. I, I, guess, had a... I guess I would throw this out here too, is what if, what if we would um, take an action on it to hold those spots potentially for purchasing them? And if after that March 28th meeting, if that doesn't happen we we cancel the 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 order of it um because right now they're they're not going to be building that truck i i can almost guarantee you if we would start the process right now that truck is not going to get into operation until the end of the year um so we could maybe look at that option as well okay we've got randy and then brian how many trucks are we thinking here and, and how old are the ones that they're going to be replacing so my my goal was to 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 pl- uh, purchase four tandem axle plow trucks. So that would be approximately a million dollars. I'll just say um, that two hundred fifty thousand a piece. Um, we would be replacing some of our older uh, single axle plow trucks that are in the nineteen nineties, ninety eights, ninety fives. Um, I'd like to get some of those 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 older trucks out of here, um, and if that means maybe we have to convert some of our um, newer trucks into our crash barrier trucks, that's what we'll have to do. Um, but I want to get rid of some of these older trucks that are just hard to to keep running. So I just ask. Good to explain that that they're replacing twenty five year old trucks or twenty year old trucks. So thanks. Yeah, that's definitely a, a better argument, Brian. Yeah, what I was thinking, uh, if you vouch for these trucks now, if they're in such so short supply, how are what are they going to do if you don't take them all? You know, they're, they'll sell them to somebody else, like right now. Correct. You know, so I would think if you wanted to act on them today. You know, that's just my thoughts. It might be a good idea. And that's what I was, uh, I was kind of just explaining is maybe we just hold a spot right now and then we, we can always act on canceling it if it doesn't work out or something like that. Okay. So I have, if we don't, I think we potentially could get into a, a 2024 model, um, unfortunately, and that's a long ways away. Okay. So two things. Um, and then, and then supervisor heart Um, what, if anything, is the cost of canceling an order? Yep. I, I don't know. I don't think there is. But okay. I, I'd have to look into that. Because that would be important. And then the other thing is these would be trucks delivered in 2023. So there would be the 2023 budget rather, rather than the 2022 budget year. Correct. Okay. So we would be um, tentatively approving them. Um, with the expectation that we would figure out how we were budgeting them for 2023, it wouldn't need an actual budget adjustment this year, which would be a county board issue. Correct. Um, okay, that's just wanted that for clarification. Uh, Supervisor Hartung. I was just wondering if there's a down payment needed or anything like that. No down payments. Okay, so. I would think, well, I would hope, I should say, that we will be directing some of the ARPA funds and or borrowing towards highway for things like equipment next year. Um, my sense of it is if we can hold a spot in the queue for four trucks um, that we might have to cancel if that doesn't come through, that makes a lot of sense. Um that just that 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 would be how I would frame it for the moment. But I think we would also need to know uh, what the cost of anything if we did cancel that order would be. Um, and certainly, if there is no cost canceling the order, I, did, I don't see any any reason not to do that. Um, so I'm not sure how we would frame a motion um, on that.
Chuck? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion that we place the order for four trucks with the contingency. If there is a cost to cancelization, then we not go through with the process. We'll second it. All right. I guess I just want to reiterate. So we would be going with the international trucks, correct? Just so we make that known. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion on that? All right. Oh, Dave? I think it should be pointed out because of the difference in price, uh, the reasons why we're going with the international, besides the battery and inside the cab and the uh, extended warranty, the, the uh, little better warranty, we've, we've been, uh, the shop is a, a warranty center for international trucks yet, isn't it? Right. So I mean, that's, that's an advantage that we don't have to run our trucks someplace to get warranty work done if it's uh if it's small items or whatever you know uh, uh electric switch send send a guy out for three hours a day to get it fixed or a half a day where the mechanic can probably do it in-house in less than a half hour or whatever i i just i just want it on record why we're i mean i i know the reasons behind it but I think I think we should have it on the you know on record of why why we're making that decision. Thank you. Okay. Do you want that just in the record of the minutes? Which I mean, that's certainly no, why. I, Dustin... I think just just in the record of the minutes, or or that it's this is a this is a video, so you know I brought that up. I think that's good enough record. But I I think we need to. We need to say why we're we're spending more money, twenty four hundred or whatever more, uh, per truck. Yeah, I'll, in, in minutes is uh, per recommendation of staff for the reasons of you've stated plus the the spec issues. I think is is adequate. Right. Anyone else have any more discussion on the motion on the floor? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so. Going back to that, Kelly, so so Chuck made the first motion. Was uh, super, yep, Supervisor Johnson. Okay, sorry. Uh, no worries, it, it, that one got a little bit uh, <laughs> complex in there. Um, so we don't think there's any cost to cancellation if there is um do you are you comfortable with waiting until after that march meeting or do we need to have some discussion of that potential issue i guess i would be comfortable for waiting at okay that time. great i just wanted to make sure we were um not putting you on the spot yep and i think those of you on the highway D committee need to uh, have your information at hand so that you can explain to the other supervisors why we need to use ARPA funds for some highway expense. Uh, that makes good sense to me. It might be nice to have um, a needs information sheet, Dustin, if you could, so that we, get, we have the, those points ready to hand for that meeting, um, if you and, um, finance want to sort out the needs issue and just, you know, like a one page sheet. I, I am a huge fan of having just one sheet to hand to supervisors because they are more likely to read it if it's just one page. And I say that as a supervisor who's more likely to read it if it's just one page. <laughs> okay, so our, our last item is discussion of the vehicle registration fee ordinance. Um, a I'm going to throw a little bit of background in here first. Uh, we need to have this reviewed by the Highway Committee no later than July. Um, since it's an ordinance adjustment, it needs two readings of the county board. Um, 
we had put it in with the possibility of putting it before the county board in March, but it's not on the exec committee agenda um, for this afternoon. So I think it can't come before the board before the April meeting. So it'll be going before the um, whatever the next board looks like. But I, I personally, as, as chair, would like to see us have a recommendation um, so that the board can take that up earlier rather than later. Um, so that's that would be the, the framework I have. Um, we can either do this formally with a, a motion and then discuss, or if you all wanted to start with discussion, let's just plunge right in. Randy? I, I'll make a motion that we continue the county vehicle registration fee. Uh, Nick, I see you have popped in. Did you have something you wanted to add immediately or? No, just <clears throat> want to be on standby. Okay. There are issues. Um, do we have a second for Supervisor Brockno's motion? Uh, Supervisor Hartung was uh, slightly ahead on that. Um, and now we can get into the formal discussion. Um, I, I think I'll just start here. I, it, we clearly have the need. Um, I think we, we're going we're to need to, to keep, keep it going forward for some time to come, unless the state comes through with a lot more highway aids. Um, I would be reluctant to bump it up from where it is now or, or drop it down. I think it's, it's a simpler um, to just reenact it going forward, but I'm certainly open to that if the committee would prefer to raise, uh, recommend raising the fee to uh, the county board. So have that people. Yeah, and I, and I guess I just wanted to make make it known. So it's it's approximately about, don't quote me on this Beata, but I believe it's about $700,000 that we're generating um, through the wheel tax or the 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 vehicle registration fee um, that we're, we're looking at. So um, it's not a tax. Yeah, it's just a fee. <laughs> yeah, the number is a um, little less than 800,000. I think we only have two years um, of history with it. Um, one full year, and then of course the in uh, the first year, uh, it was not. It didn't go into effect until I think March first or April first. So um, we had to wait a little bit. Um. So if we advance this, I should have. I should know the answer to this, but I don't know off the top of my head. Um, would we then need to bring this back in uh, July of next year again? Would we be looking at the same sunset or do we want to, or would it be, or is there no sunset provision for advancing it or do, or, or. Well, uh, you have some options. One of them is you can simply remove the sunset provision. Uh, the other one is you can modify the terms of the, the uh, registration fee. Uh, and the, uh, the other is you can change the sunset provision to a different day. Like you could set it out two years from now or three years from now or something if you want to. Whatever the committee decides here today, uh, what I would do is draft a resolution, uh, just a draft resolution that would come up to the county board for consideration by the county board, which ultimately has the you know, responsibility to decide what's in it. Amendment could occur. Um, um, vote in favor of it as written or, um, you know, rejection of it, in which case the terms of the ordinance as it is currently written would, would control the outcome. And so, I mean, if you think it's, if you think it's so, you know, if you think it's sufficiently important enough that uh, sunset isn't a practical solution, you could remove it. But if you'd like to still have that obligation to continue to revisit it and make sure that it's, you know, meeting um, the requirements that, that, that were, you know, anticipated in support of it, then, then you can 
you know, just change the sunset terms, the date or the whatever. So and that's why uh, I'm sorry. That's why I included the the uh, ordinance. Um, yep, was in the packet so that you can look at it and decide which words you want to tinker with. Yep, I had read it and and it it's gone. I did, did not retain that information in my brain at all. It just vaporized. Um, so I, I'm going to exercise the chance to speak here a little bit more. And then, and then my thinking is probably that the county board as a whole is unlikely to approve uh, completely getting rid of the sunset clause. I think that's, that's very, I think that if we recommend to the board um, a two year sunset horizon, um, which would come after the election. So that would fall after the election then each, 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 each year going forward, it would be the decision of the new board coming in, whether to go with it, with it or not. I think that might be, might sell a little better, but that's just me. So um, further discussion. I'd agree with you, Kelly. Okay. Um, Brian. I disagree with you, Kelly. I would like to take the sunset provision out of it, but I'm just one. Well, I, 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 I think it's a terrible idea. I just don't think it'll sell. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. My thoughts are you're opening up the wound every two years. I, I do not disagree. For what so, it's worth, the county board in considering the resolution could could amend it to add the a sunset provision in um, if it wishes to. Okay, so Nick, I like I said, it, it vaporized for me. Is there no sunset provision in the amendment as you sent it to us? Uh, well, what I sent you was the, the, the text of the ordinance as it's currently written. And so okay. the, the, the ordinance, if based on what the motion is so far and what I'm hearing from supervisors, uh, either the motion, uh, a, a draft resolution that captures that would either reset the sunset provision and the highway committee review provision or just remove uh, subsection nine Completely, which would eliminate the, the sunset provision altogether. Okay, so um, Chuck, I believe you made the motion. Oh, no, sorry. Randy. Randy. Oh man, my brain is, 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 is clearly not it. So um, I guess the question becomes, what, what, what do you want to include? What, what did you want to include in your motion? Continue the uh, wheel to the, Continue the vehicle registration fee at the current rate with and that you have with or without the sunset clause. I just the way the county discussed this last time without a sunset, I just don't think it will fly again. So I, that's why I'm, I don't like the sunset. I don't want the sunset, but I just think to get it past the county board, you're going to have to put a sunset in. So, but I guess they can make that at the county board themselves. So I have no problem with getting rid of the sunset clause. So, okay. So to clarify, the motion is to continue the vehicle registration fee at the current rate with no sunset clause. Correct. And then, like I said, if the county board wants to add that at the county board meeting, I guess they can do that. Okay. And who was the second on that? Joel. Joe, is that does are you, is are you comfortable with that with your second? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so we're we are clear on what the motion states. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of the motion as proposed. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, Nick, you know what you're working with. Yeah, I, it'll be a resolution that just basically repeals subsection nine of the uh, current ordinance. Okay, and given that it'll be coming forward at the April exec, because it's not on today's exec. Right. Um, and that you will be acting um, county manager at that point. 
I'm yeah. going to rely on you to make sure it gets on the agenda for next exec. It'll be there. Probably. <laughs> oh, it'll be. Okay. There. Um, if I am not misremembering that. Oh, work zone uh, awareness ordinance. There we go. I knew we had one more. Do we have um, any discussion or does someone want to make a motion? Supervisor Maves. Yeah, I make a motion that we uh, recommended to the county board about the work zone awareness week. Excellent. Do we have a second? Supervisor Johnson seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, our next meeting date is April 13th. Hopefully we will. We are done with our run of special meetings for a while, so uh, this committee won't meet again until then. Um, <clears throat> anyone else have anything they need to ask Dustin on the record or need to add? Because otherwise we are adjourned.